Get the Get the off. Off. Give me some space, okay, dude. No, give me some. Ow! Oh. I really thought in my heart they were going to arrest me for, for something. I do not know the law legally. Police officers are the frontline defenders of our communities, ensuring public safety and upholding the rule of law. Every day, officers across the nation work tirelessly to protect and serve. They respond to emergencies, investigate crimes, and foster a sense of security that allows our communities to thrive. But sometimes police fail miserably to serve the public and they serve themselves all the while thinking they are above the law. It's essential to note that I respect the hard work of law enforcement, but we must address cases where power may have been abused. So, here are five incidents when the boys in blue thought they were above the law and stood for everything they were not supposed to stand for. But first, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. YouTube is not happy with content like this, so your likes help out the reach of this video in the algorithm. The story of our first case starts when the star of this video, Lieutenant Henry Trillo and his partner were engaged in a standard traffic stop on November 29, 2022, when they observed a car parked behind them. While it may appear to be a small matter, Lieutenant Trillo chose to approach the driver, intensifying the situation. Do you need to be behind this traffic stop? Yeah, I do. Why? It's my son right there. He was following me. Before. Okay, he's on a traffic stop, so you don't need to be behind it. Oh, you gotta be mean? Oh, I'm not being mean. We just don't like when people pull in behind us. I don't like when they pull my son over. That's what we get paid to do, to pull people over. Well, you don't get paid to be a <laughs> you're well, You don't son. either, okay? I don't got to put up with you. <laughs> okay, I asked you a simple question, okay? Pretty safe to say the conversation started on the wrong foot, right? But wait, there's more. You are not a cop. You don't need to be I behind don't care you. If okay? cop so you need to leave no, right I now. No, I don't need to do anything. You I'm got on a five seconds street. to leave. Okay, there's no reason for you to be behind this traffic stop. No reason. I'm okay. On a public street. No reason. Okay. It's not a public. No street. reason. Do I not pay? Okay. Do you always stop road? behind cops when they pull people over? I ain't stopped right behind you. Okay. You don't need to be here. I ain't. You don't need right to be here. You, okay. Sir. You need to go. No, I okay. don't. I'm waiting on my son. All right, He's fine. Right. What our bright lieutenant fails to understand here is that the man's son is the driver in front of him, and that's why the man in question is waiting there. Judging by the spiraling situation, the father decided to take the high road. Although in no manner was he wrong here, he started to drive away, following the officer's instructions. What happens next will completely stun you. Leave. That's the car. Stay! 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 Hey! Stop the Stop the car! Get out the car! Get out the Get out the car! What are you gonna do? You gonna SD file, SD file, give me the radio. Get out the car! 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 Stop it now! Get out the car! Get out! Get out the car! Get out the car! Are you recording? Yeah, we're recording it. What the hell do you think you're doing? I ain't doing anything. Okay. Now you're on a traffic stop and you're trying to drive away. Get out hey. the car, Paul State. Get out oh. the car. Oh. Has nothing to do with anything. Get out of the car. 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 Get out the car. Get out the car. Get out the car. Get out the car. I'm not. Get out the car, man. I'm trying. Get back over there now. I'm trying. You just stay there and record. Can you guys get out? Hold on. Now. I'm getting out. I'm not. You're out. under arrest. I'm not. Get out. Turn around the face of the truck. I'm just, you're under arrest. Get out. Okay, guys. Put your hands behind your back. Down. Put Set. your hands Set. behind Set. your back. Put your hands behind your back. I'm going. Put your hands I'm going peacefully. Behind. Clearly, the man is calm and cooperative. But all this falls on deaf ears, leading to a forceful arrest. Settle down. What's going on here? Get just back. Get back. Hey, God. He's recording this case. Oh, that's fine. He can record all he wants. This, this is the case, guys. Hey, guys. You, guys you do what you're told, all right? 
You think it's okay just to roll no, off on traffic I'm stops? No, I'm not. Do what you're told. Now you go to jail. That's all right. I'm a turn around and face the truck. I'm already cuffed. Man. But they weren't done yet. After putting the man, or should I say the victim, safely in the car, the two cops, in a brilliant show of policemanship, decided to take him out again and teach him what it's like to mess with the law. I got my wallet. Get out now. Get out the f now. Get out the car. Okay. This is how it's going to work. Okay. You're going to do what you're told to do. And that's it. Stand up. Stand up. Up against the car. Spread your feet. Come on, guys. This is sick. Stop. Safe. Come on, man. it. This is ridiculous. Well, quit acting like an idiot. I ain't acting like nothing. I got a case of peace in my lip. You guys shot me right in the damn face. Shortly, the supervisor arrived, and if you're thinking, yes, this is finally the moment when these corrupt cops would be given due justice, sorry to disappoint you folks. These cops were much smarter than you can imagine. Want to watch how you flip a script? We tried to uh, get him out, and he was refusing, and then when we tried to put him in, he was refusing. So I tased him, but he fell back, so one hit him here, one hit him in the skin or something. So we'll have Matt come and take a look at him. And then I tried to get him out to pass search him and get his wallet because he wouldn't tell me anything. And then that's when that's when you rolled up. Okay. I'm gonna get him over to the jail. Bravo. Beautifully done. Job well done, fellas. We feel safer already. Not only did they charge the poor guy with resisting arrest, but also accused him of assaulting a police officer. Of course, once the truth surfaced, the charges were dropped and according to his attorney, he plans to file a civil lawsuit against the two cops, and he rightfully should, wouldn't you? Next from this star-studded lineup is Officer Hinkle, who probably is the sweetest and has the nicest voice one can find. Don't believe me? Hear for yourself. In this parking lot right now. Pull over! Damn, my ears. Let's find out the reason why this sweet man is displaying such an outstanding code of conduct when talking to this obnoxious lady. One fine day on the 13th of December, 2022, Officer Hinkle was managing traffic at a busy intersection where the traffic lights had malfunctioned. While directing traffic, an unexpected vehicle disregarded his commands, causing him to react in such a gentlemanly manner. Even after scolding the woman for a while, Officer Hinkle wasn't about to cool down his anger, as you can clearly hear from this footage. What are you doing here today? I'm going to Target. You're going to Target? Yeah, to do a pickup. What is such an important factor that me standing in the middle of the street, Sir, stopping swear. you, and you try to run me over? Sir, I swear. And then you looked at me, you waved at me, and then you kept going anyway. I, I swear I was not trying to run you over. I thought you were... Cars were going. I'm telling you to stop in the middle of the street and you wave at me I, and keep going. I I saw your hand before and I was too late to stop. No, it wasn't. You were doing 10 I'm miles sorry. an hour and you still drove by me. I'm so, you didn't even sir, attempt to stop your car. Sir. You're lucky you're not in handcuffs right this second. I'm very sorry, sir. I really am. Explain to my sorry. kids why, why they don't have a dad sir. a week before Christmas because you're trying to run somebody over. Sir, I promise. You see the bright lights flashing in the middle of the street? That means you just caution there's a cop out there. 
I got kids at home and you almost ran me over okay. a week before Christmas. Sir, when I see a flashing yellow light. It's not flashing, it's red and blue. It That's a cop car standing in the middle of the street flashing light. Wait, what? Ran over? No, Dad, before Christmas. You gotta stop with the dramatics, Mr. Hinkle. Gotta let that go. He waves at me and still tries to drive by me. Run her, please, and make sure she's valid. I can't believe you. A week before Christmas, I almost get ran over. I got two kids at home waiting for me to come home tonight. Sir, I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't break it. You looked right at me and still decided to drive by me. No, you weren't! I was in the middle of the intersection! Yes, sh Emotionally. Later, the Waterbury Police Department disclosed that Officer James Hinkle had been terminated after an internal affairs investigation found that his actions, conduct, and behavior violated department policies. And that's what you get as a professional adult being unable to check your emotions. You seem like a, like a constitutionalist to me. Are uh, you? A little bit, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm a lot a constitutionalist. And trust me, folks, you will be surprised to know how constitutionalist cops like these are in a few minutes. The incident I'm talking about here happened in Alexandria, Louisiana, when the driver of this red Mustang, Mario Rosales, was stopped by the police for failing to signal a turn. Can you be honest with me? Why am I being stopped? Is it a failure signal? That's straight, pure, straight, honest answer. He failed to signal, so we stopped you. Failure to signal, huh? But wait, what's this then? Unless my eyes are deceiving me, that seems like a clear as day signal to me. At this point, Mario told the officer that he did have a firearm in his car, but not on his person. Like an upstanding citizen, Mario seemed to remain calm and the officers had no reason to believe that he was lying or was armed and dangerous, yet they frisked Mario which was completely unconstitutional even if they had pulled him over for legitimate reasons. Our Mario knows that they can't search his car just for the failure to signal, and cops planting drugs is not something we have not heard of. Hey, these cops may be honest, but better be safe than sorry. Hey, listen, I don't know if my partner's done this or not, but I'm going to do it, okay? Uh, you do have the right to remain silent. Hey, then you say cannon will be used against you to call the law to understand your rights? Yeah. Uh, Traffic stops a legal detainment. The reason I did that is I got a couple questions that may or may not pertain to your guilt or innocence, right? So I always advise before I ask those types of questions. That yeah, goes to the, the Fifth Amendment, right? So anytime you're not comfortable with one of my questions, you can say pass. Are you familiar with the Fifth Amendment? Do you mind emptying out your pockets for me on the hood of my car? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a question. That's it. Nothing else? You mind if I check? Hey, grab my bar real quick. Do you mind if I check? Uh, Do you have something on you you're not supposed to have? I don't have anything on me. A couple of things that are wrong here. First, the officer frisked Mario for a weapon, violating his rights. Now, they want to search him again for evidence of crimes. Hello, Mr. Constitutionalist. Don't you know you need to have something called a warrant to do that? And more, if they didn't teach you this in cop school, here's a reminder that you need to first arrest someone if you're going to search them lawfully. The poor guy had no choice but to empty his own pockets. Nothing else? Do you mind if I check? Hey, you grab my bar real quick. Do you mind if I check? Uh, Do you have something on you you're not supposed to have? I don't have anything on me. Yeah. I mean, I'd feel a lot safer if uh, she had her phone. She was able to record while you check me. Yeah, I record. Here comes another violation. Talk about abuse of power. Don't these knuckleheads know that Americans have a First Amendment right to record the police? Jeez. Have you ever been arrested for anything? No, I have not. Never? Never. Okay. Have a clean record? I got you. Any marijuana in the vehicle? No. Uh, meth? No. Uh, heroin? No. Fentanyl? No. Prescription pills not prescribed? No. Okay. Cocaine? Crack cocaine? No. I don't, I don't do drugs. 
drugs. I don't have any kind of illegal substances or drugs. Let's be clear about one thing. Even in the scenario where Rosales failed to signal initially, it's important to know that the courts have determined that this alone doesn't justify launching an extensive investigation into potential drug-related offenses. When police pull you over for minor traffic infractions, they are not permitted to detain you and inquire about unrelated matters. To question you about other illegal activities, they must possess what is referred to as reasonable articulable suspicion that you have committed, are committing, or are about to commit a crime. Without such suspicion, the police can only proceed with the standard traffic ticketing process and must subsequently allow you to resume your normal activities without further interference. Although the good Mario promptly answered all the questions, between you and me, you must know that you do not have to answer such questions and can just politely decline. From what I can see, looks like the cops are acting on a preconceived hunch based on something like maybe his appearance, his car, or the out-of-state license plates. But are those the criteria that make one suspicious of dealing drugs? I don't think so. Do you live here? This is where I'm trying to res uh, create my residence. So, where do you, where do you live? I got you. I'm so trying to get, because in order to for me to change my address and all that, I need to get proof of residency. So, I've been having to swap over a lot of my bank statements and all that. So, it's a move from Long story short, the records were called, and here comes the most shocking part of the incident. Did you call them up yet? Huh? Say what? Did you call that up yet? I would say that there's more to this than meets the eye. I would okay. check that, and I would check this. Fail to signal, fail to update his driver's license. Oh, here comes the 32. Oh, what are the chances of that? What are the chances of that? Yes, you heard that correctly. Doesn't it sound like our good cops are in disbelief? That how can it be? How can a Latino man driving a red Mustang with out-of-state number plates not be a wanted criminal? Finally, the officers wrote Rosales a ticket for failure to signal and not switching his registration. I don't know what this was going to become, and I was more concerned. Uh, yeah, I was more concerned after I saw the, saw the police officer have her exit the vehicle. I honestly thought that I was not going to be able to drive away. I really thought in my heart they were going to arrest me for, for something. This is nothing but a stark reminder of how some cops are polite, but deep down they lie, intimidate people, and even violate constitutional rights at the drop of a hat. Talking about intimidating people, how can we not include this situation where a veteran cop broke all limits and went as far as attacking a fellow female officer? It all started when a few officers were facing difficulties with a non-compliant citizen who refused to follow their commands. Miss, can you stop pulling the handcuffs on my wrist? God, you don't listen. You're not stronger than me, miss. I'm letting you know that. All right, let's go. We're going right. to take a seat. Watch your head getting into the car. Ah, miss, can you stop just, pulling the cuffs? Just get in the car and you're inside. Get in the car. Get in the car. Despite the challenges, the situation was still manageable until the arrival of Christopher Pulis, a 21-year-old veteran. Being high and mighty, Pulis seemed to believe that he was the hero of the situation. But then, his actions took a drastic turn for the worse. Get in the car. Get in the car. Alright, I'm getting in. Get your What's feet up? in. What's up? Hey, 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 look at me. Look at me. Look at me. You wanna to play games? You play with the wrong mother. What you gotta do, man? You gonna mace me, mace me. Look at me, mother. You wanna play games? You Sir. ever get disrespectful in my and I'll you search out with you. Remove your soul from your body. Sensing Poulos' crazy mind, when a female officer tried to intervene and pull him away, he went manic, and this is where all hell broke loose. Do what you gotta do. No. 
Just, just let it be. I don't understand that. Yes, sir. And I'll see you in about five minutes. The incident gained widespread attention after going viral, sparking public outrage. And as a result, the 47-year-old sergeant was later charged with battery and assault on a law enforcement officer. Word of advice, Sarge. Next time, a little more aggression on the bench press machine and a little less on the job. That should do the trick. Up next, we have Lieutenant Donald Malazzo and Sergeant Jennifer Larson. The duo have been cops for more than 20 years. Normally, after two decades of work experience, one is expected to be a veteran and well-versed in the area. Surprisingly, this was not the case with these two. If anything, they came across like grade A rookies. What lawful basis was there for you to demand her ID? I don't know. What lawful basis was there for you to put her in handcuffs in response to her not giving you her ID? I don't um, know. In order to detain somebody, what do you have to have legally? Mm, I do not know the law legally. Okay. Because I'm going to, I'm, I don't know the law exactly. You don't know when an officer is allowed to detain somebody? It was at this moment that she knew she fucked up. God help us. So, things kicked off when a woman named Amanda was filming the Cook County Courthouse from outside. And her all-wise and all-knowing lieutenant, in his infinite wisdom, came out and told her that her actions were illegal and called to put her under observation. If only he knew that her video recording was entirely legal as according to the law. If there are no oral conversations in a public place, it can be video recorded. Hey ma'am, you know this is a public building? Exactly, that's why I'm recording okay. it. It's also a court facility? Yep. Which there is a judicial law or judicial order that says that you cannot tape this building. Can I see that order? Yes, come on in. I'll, we're going to check your IDs too. Oh, no, I'm not going in. Oh yeah, no, 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 we're going to run you too. No, that's we're all right. We're get your name. We're gonna do a report and everything. So come on in. Um, right? no. No, yeah, you're gonna come in now. Am I being detained? Yes. For what? Because right now we, you are doing something suspicious. That's not a reason to detain anybody. Well, it is for Diana. Come on. It's really not. Let's go so inside, I'm just gonna stay here and continue recording. Okay. You're gonna come in and we're gonna find out who you are and what you're doing here. No, you're not. Okay. All right, who's got cuffs? She does not want to go agreeably. After this small pat, Amanda had no other alternative but to comply with the officer's unjust demand. But what happened inside was a complete disaster, as captured by Sergeant Jennifer Larson's body camera. That includes my camera as far as um, consent. Mm -hmm. well, it's already on. Are you familiar so. with the Fourth Amendment? Oh, great. Why do we always get the crazy? I don't know. And then the lieutenant started showing his true colors. Do you need to delete my footage? Do you want to cooperate or not? I'm remaining silent. Okay. It is only making it worse. Do you want to give I'm us an ID? Silent. I'm remaining silent. Don't get sent to searches. We're not going to search you. We're going to search you for an ID. What the fuck is going on today? I don't know. Every crazy loon in the building is coming. We're asking, asking for an ID. We'll do, we'll do a report. You can go on your way with your camera. Otherwise, I'm going to confiscate the camera, and we're going to take it out. Still a crime. And print you because you're suspicious. Remaining silent. This is going to be your last chance. We're going to take you downstairs. Then you will be arrested. We will fingerprint you, and we will run you. Is this what you want? Remaining silent. We're going to probably take her in front of the judge. Okay. Uh, he's going to hold her in contempt for, I think right now he's doing 90 days. Okay. So, is that okay with you? Remain silent. Okay, but you realize you're going to go to Cook County Jail for 90 days. Remain silent. Okay. Okay. Now you have an option. All you have to do is show us an ID so that we can do a report and we'll let you go on your way. I have an option? Okay. Yeah. We told you that before. Because right now you're just obstructing and you're in contempt. Obstructing what? You're obstructing us from doing our job. From remaining silent. All right, cuff her. Let's get her purse. Ten. Get her stuff. I don't consent to searches. Well, we don't care anymore. Kudos to Amanda for maintaining silence and an exceptionally calm demeanor even when she was repeatedly being threatened by the officer. The police then handcuffed Amanda for obstruction of justice. 
but she was released eventually. Shortly, she sued Cook County for human rights violations including unlawful detention, intimidation, threats, unlawful arrest, misconduct in office, and illegal search. Bergquist's case against Cook County was settled in 2022 for $15,000, but renewed attention has led to the case going viral on various social media platforms. Just take a look. See these deposition clips? I, for one, have just one word to describe these two. Dumb and dumber. Is it against the law to take pictures of a courthouse? No, not that I know is it lawful to arrest somebody for taking pictures outside of the courthouse, of the courthouse? No, not that I know. Are you familiar with this case at all? Which case? The, the case that brings us here today, that you're testifying in? Yes. Okay, and, and in a nutshell, what's the case about? I would say that Amanda is I guess I called you to say that she was uh, outside videoing when she shouldn't have been. So she's saying we violated her amendment rights. You're correct. Um, what, when you say when she shouldn't have been, what, what does that mean? Was she doing something wrong? Uh, just something unusual, what us as officers would consider unusual. Unusual, okay. Would it be lawful just because it's unusual? No, I don't. Okay. Is there something unlawful about recording outside of a building? I'm sorry, what was the question? Let me ask you this. Was Miss doing anything illegal when she was detained? Uh, no, I would say it was not illegal, unusual. Okay. Um, in order to detain somebody, what do you have to have legally? Do you know? I do not know the law legal. I can't say about you guys, but that looks like a pretty guilty face to me. What is even more astounding is that after 20 years of police service, she doesn't have a clue about the law. Was there a lawful basis to handcuff her? Yes. Okay, and what was that lawful basis? Officer safety. Did you have any reasonable suspicion that she was committing a crime? We had reasonable suspicion to ask her what she was doing and why she was doing it just to get who she was and why. You and I agree on that, that you had the right to ask her whatever you wanted to ask her. Did you have the right to put her in handcuffs? For the security of the officers, yes. Okay. What made her a threat? Her refusing to give any information that was requested of her. Was she legally obligated to give that information? When an officer has asked her for security purposes to give her identity up. Since when did someone's refusal to give their identity make them a threat? Do these lawmen know anything? Have you ever heard of something called a Terry search or a Terry frisk? I have. Okay, what is that? Um, I'm not going to say exactly. I don't know the law. Okay. Um, well, let me just ask you this. A police officer is allowed to go over to anybody they want, demand to see ID, and if they refuse, they get to arrest them? Is that your testimony? Or detain them? Um, I do believe, yes. For officer safety, they do have the right. Doesn't there have to be reasonable suspicion that the person committed a criminal offense or violated a law? Because I'm going to, I don't know the law exactly. Well, at least she is honest, unlike the lieutenant here. Are you familiar with the Fourth Amendment, by the way? Vaguely. What does it say in your own vague terms? Uh, no illegal search and seizure. Right. Unless there's? Probable cause. Or? That's about all I know. Okay, all right, good enough. He said that's about all I know. All right, um, now, there was somebody else who asked you the same question that I just asked you about your familiarity with the Fourth Amendment. Uh, who's in this room right now? Do you know who that person was? My client, Ms. asked you that, didn't she? I don't recall. She asked you, are you familiar with the Fourth Amendment? You don't remember that? No. No. Hmm. Let's freshen up the officer's memories. A lawyer. Okay. Call your lawyer. That includes my camera as far as um, mm -hmm. consent. Well, it's already on. It's so. really with the Fourth Amendment? Oh, great. Why do we always get the grief? I don't know. When people act in a way that 
is not in their best interest. How was she acting that was not in her best interest? Well, at any time, all she had to do was identify herself. We could have done our report. You have an option. All you have to do is show us an ID so that we could do a report, and we'll let you go on your way. And everything could have gone the own. And if, uh, if somebody were to threaten you that unless you comply with their demands, they're going to put you in handcuffs, would you automatically necessarily comply with their demands? Yes. No object. You would. False for speculation. He was able to answer. So, so you would. So even if, uh, even if there's somebody who is acting as a law enforcement officer, giving you an unlawful order, threatening you with detainment or arrest or 90 days jail, if you don't comply with their unlawful demands, you would still comply? Yes. Alrighty. Is that what you expected her to do, to comply? Yes. Is there a law that requires people to identify themselves when requested by law enforcement? I don't know. Of course you don't know. Maybe you should go back to the training academy and this time actually focus on learning something. Did you delete her pictures? No. Who did? Don't know. You don't know who deleted her pictures? No. By the time you got in front of Judge Peter Felice, they were deleted, weren't they? As far as I know, they were still on there. You grabbed her camera yes. away from her outside, did you not? Yes. From that point until you were in front of Judge Peter Felice, did she ever hold her camera again? No. Okay, so you had it the entire time? Yes. Didn't Judge Peter Felice talk to you about whether the pictures had been deleted? He asked for the, the memory thing so he could delete Wow. So now the judge wants to delete them? Things just keep getting bigger minute after minute, or should I say, lie after lie. You just said that he asked you for the memory card because he wanted to delete the pictures. Is that your testimony? Yes. Okay. And if he were to testify at some point in time that he absolutely, categorically, did not delete those pictures, then would you want to change your answer as to whether you or one of your people did? <coughs> no one had custody of the camera but me. Okay. Would it have been lawful for you to delete her pictures? I don't know. What do you think? Are you allowed to go over to people's pictures and delete them? No. Without a court order? No. All right. That would be a violation of which amendment, do you know? No. I, what do you do if somebody says they want to talk to a lawyer and you have them in handcuffs? We allow them to call a lawyer. Do you, do, you keep, do you keep asking them questions? It depends on the case. Oh, I got you. Okay, tell me the case in which you would continue to ask questions for, of somebody in custody after they ask for a lawyer. If we're doing an investigation, we're going to ask. I got you. Okay. Do you know which amendment it is that allows people to demand a lawyer? Do you have any idea? No. Have you ever read anybody the Miranda rights? No. You've never read anybody their Miranda rights? No. Have you ever arrested anybody? No. Other than Ms. Burquist? No. Um, and, uh, and you don't know the Miranda rights? Not offhand, no. All right. Um, when you arrest somebody, do you have to advise them that they have the right to remain silent? Yes. Do you have to advise them that they have the right to an attorney? Yes. Do you have to advise them that if they cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided to them? Yes. Okay. Um, now, what if somebody says, yes, I want to talk to an attorney? Do you get to keep asking them questions? Or do you have to call a lawyer for them before you want to ask any more questions? <coughs> I don't know. You don't know? You don't know if you're allowed to keep asking questions of somebody in custody after they ask for a lawyer? No. How long have you been employed under, at, at Cook County Sheriff's? 27 years. 27 years. I imagine you only became a lieutenant recently? No. How long ago did you become a lieutenant? 22 years ago. You've been a lieutenant for 22 years and you don't know the Miranda rights? Yes. I guess we've seen enough. It's not the subject of a joke when one hears that a veteran cop with 20 years of experience doesn't know things like Miranda rights and the Fourth Amendment. I mean common. These things are common knowledge. It's as American as it gets, 
And for a cop with two decades of experience, I really am at a loss for words here, folks. No wonder the police make such unjustified arrests and violate human rights. What else can be expected from such cops? Sadly, the internet is littered with such incidents where the boys in blue thought they were above the law and a badge and a uniform gave them a free ride to use the law as they pleased. Be it this cop named Drew Scott Romo, who after being intoxicated leveraged his badge to get out of the situation. You need to go. They don't want you here, so you have to go. It's simple. If you don't want to be in trouble with us, just go. That's it. Dude, I'm fucking on your side. Or, in this case, when a cop literally manhandled a guy named Joshua Roberts. And for what? The poor guy was doing nothing but filming on public property. Oh, you're getting really close, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like to get close. I like to talk to people. Can you stop? No, you're sir. So I, I want to talk to you. What's dude, going on, stop, my friend? Stop getting so close to me, dude. What's going on, man? Dude, stop approaching me. Sir, I, I'm allowed. Back to off, dude. Okay. Give me some space, dude. Go ahead and turn. Give me some space, dude. Behind the back. No, give me some. Ow! Oh. Oh. Behind your For back. For what? For what? For, uh, for you? Absolutely. Doesn't it make you question whether the police are there to help or not? Now, I'm not saying all cops are the same, and there are plenty of good ones who act nothing but as a symbol for the pillar of justice for society. But every now and then, a new video services and a new lawsuit gets settled, which does put a microscope on lawmen. I know, I know, a few rotten apples. So, as responsible and upstanding citizens, let's create more awareness and educate ourselves on these things and you know what? You don't have to go any further. Just keep watching our channel and hell, you never know. Perhaps you could get out of such a situation by just watching our videos, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Police in the United States are supposed to serve the public, but sometimes they serve the state and they serve themselves, all the while thinking they are above the law. Let us know in the comments section if there are any interactions or legal incidents like these you would like us to discuss. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.